Welcome to We Choose to Thrive. This is our interview series with women who have decided to rise above the abuse, no matter what kind of abuse it was, of their past, and to live rich, full lives. We hope you will enjoy our interview series. Well, Shikan, it is delightful to have you in my home, and this is an unusual interview that we have. We're sitting here right next to each other, and um, Oshikan is in in this chapter the we ch in the chapter we choose to thrive and is also writing the foreword for our book. And in this interview for we choose to thrive, we're going to have a conversation now. We met we met at Jane's event, didn't we? Jane empowers. Yes, we did. Cool. Oshikan lives in Berlin. Her and her husband are traveling through the United States right now, and they swing by here so we could meet in a connecting person again. But what a small world. This is so exciting. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about you, Oshikan. Yeah. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm from California, from the San Francisco Bay Area, but I met a German, so that's why I live in Berlin. And... We are just having a wonderful, extraordinary, beautiful trip right now. We'll just swing over this way to meet <laughs> Becky. So the the uh, Arizona right now is absolutely gorgeous where everybody else is getting the really, really cold. We're just beautiful temperatures. Of course, we have the summers that, that make you think twice, you know, <laughs> with the massive heat. But today we want to have a conversation about why... Oshikan decided to share in the We Choose to Thrive series what was the story of her past that led her to be the person that she is today and have a conversation about why we're, we've chosen We Choose to Thrive as one of our ways to get the message out. It's This is the second book in our series. Um, you will hear background noise. We have family in the background, but it's a, the perfect time for us to have this wonderful conversation. And Oshikan has a story like all of us. I don't think there's one person on the face of this earth that can get through life without having some kind of something that shakes up their world. And it's what we do about it. And so that's why this conversation is today. So I want to hand it over to you, Oshikan, and tell us uh, some of the story of your past in your journey to healing and wellness. Okay, well, I'm doing this interview because I've become an absolute advocate for kindness to others and for self-love and respect for ourselves. That has just become so important to me. And your journey to, based around the theory of love and kindness to each other, but what was your journey to finally to come to this point where you're you're doing a business like this? I am a coach and a healing practitioner for psychotherapy. That's a type of licensing in Germany. And I did spend a long time being a coach for expats and love paths, but something kept on calling to me to want to deal with, address the issues of verbal and psychological abuse, especially if it comes from your mother or primary caretaker. That has been my situation. And to be able to share the knowledge that I've gained so that people can move faster on their healing journey than I have is why I do this work now. It's beautiful. And you know, I've in our book we have the stories are as many and varied as the people that are in the book. The women that have chosen to stand up and take a stand. The abuse can come from a father, a family member, somebody that was a friend of the family. It can come from mothers. It can come from, and you'll see in the book, from people that that experienced it through the religions that they were a part of. And so it's as many and varied as it can be. And it's also one thing we've learned is that abuse is abuse. It does not matter where the abuse came from. What matters is what we do about it. And, it can, and the abuse can come from all different kinds of sources. So how do we get through it? How do we heal from it is, is the big key part of why this is, this is. Because some of us get stuck living this kind of rear view mirror. We're always looking back. And we're not able to move forward and enjoy the beauty and the joy of life because 
we're stuck. We're stuck in that pattern of the grief and the shame and the fear that it, that happened. And we're losing touch with the beauty of, and the fun of what life can really be. So what are your thoughts in that regard, Ashikan, is um, I know that what you experienced was huge for you. And you've had to come full circle and, and to, be, to be in the place that you are. Yes, to make it a little bit more clear, what I experienced was my mother was very frustrated with her own life, her situation, and she lashed out verbally at a lot of people, and especially in my direction, because I, as a teen, became rebellious. I was a California hippie of the 70s, and our personalities also did not match well together and I actually was a very good daughter because I internalized what her messages were to me that I am in some way shape or form just no good and this is I think always the crux of the matter that we start believing our abuser and internalize it and then start believing this about ourselves and speaking with ourselves in a critical and harsh and degrading way. That's what I am absolutely dedicated to changing. How did you change it in yourself? There were a lot of different modalities that I have learned. Training in positive psychology and the exercises that can be used for many different areas is one of the big places where I, or ways that I find help for myself and for clients. It's all about, positive psychology is all about concentrating on what is right and good about us instead of looking at our weaknesses all the time, but understanding what our strengths are. And that has been very, very helpful for me. Then there's a technique, it's a union based exercise or technique called voice dialogue, which is a way to speak to different parts of yourself. Then meditation is very important to me, either to just calm yourself and get in touch with your inner wisdom, but also to learn, be in contact with various aspects of yourself, and to learn metta bhavana, which means loving kindness. I read, a, I learned a technique the other day. One of, um, I'm in a networking group that's right here on Zoom, and it uh, we do it through Facebook. And the, the lady was giving her uh, presentation to us of what she does for her business. And she does hypnotherapy, but she also said, said that one of the biggest healing things was for her to write how she was feeling with her right hand, and then with her left hand respond you know how she would like to feel and she said it was very fascinating what came out from that there's a lot of different methods that that are out there for us to use and it's so important to take advantage of whatever works for each one of us also part of my healing is being a mother myself i've raised three children i have grandchildren and that i was able, although I sometimes felt like I was flying by the seat of my pants because I did not have a kind of role model and needed to learn more about positive parenting, I'm very proud actually that I did not pass on the negative family legacy to my own children and now they're loving parents themselves. So I'm, I'm really That's happy beautiful. about that because even my grandmother had abused my mother, so the pattern was going on and on. It's so important to break those chains, chains of abuse. And I know when, just before my father um, passed away, he came to me and he said, I, I'm really proud of you. And I'm like, why? And he said, because you broke the pattern of abuse in our family. You know, so good for us. Good for us, for sure. And, you know, the beauty and the joy of that and what that did to change my own feeling for life because he was the one that was the abuser in my family. And um, it was a tough road to overcome it. But when he said that, it was like, 
uh, he even recognized it. But he came from a long pattern of abuse in his life, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so what makes it beautiful is that we're changing the pattern for our children. In turn, our children are much better parents. And it's changing our world because we're getting smarter, you know, about how this is done. Yeah. There's much more information available now, too. We can learn about what psychological, emotional, verbal abuse is. We've got the Me Too movement happening that has brought out sexual abuse. And I hope that it expands so that we understand more about emotional and psychological abuse because manipulative people are really tricky and they would like us to believe what they want us to believe about ourselves and then we internalize it and it's just so painful. Very much. So then I think the emotions of um, shame, guilt, fear, those are often the ones that our abusers want us to feel like it's our fault. Our abusers also want us to be ashamed of ourselves. They they guilt us, you know, or we allow to be ourselves to be guilted. We don't, if it started when we were young, we don't always have a frame of reference to know any different. Mm -hmm. And and fear, fear of actually speaking up and, and incurring the wrath of that person sometimes is also a factor. In, in the studies on vibrational frequencies, they talk about how there's a scale that measures, that they've discovered that measures frequencies of emotions. And 20, 30, 40, 50 on this scale is the, the emotions of shame and guilt and fear and anger. And as you get the courage to start standing up, it's, it raises it up to 300. And then love is considered at 500. So there's courage and then acceptance and then love. And that it's more of us begin to take those, those um, actions to heal ourselves and to, to live our own truth, that as we go to get the courage to do that, those vibrational frequencies start affecting our own families and in turn it radiates out to the world. So it's a, it's a really cool thing what happened. And to be able to get to those places of the higher frequencies, I do believe that we need to educate ourselves, first of all, of what the abuse, what kind of abuse it is. And what I've specialized in is if your primary caretaker, your mother has abused you, to look at the roles that mothers take on and then the reactions that daughters have to compensate or to deal with this, then we need to learn how to set boundaries and to, as much as possible, stop the abuse. It's not always easy to stop an abuser, definitely not as a child. Yeah, it isn't. Um, but to keep or ourselves safe. even saying, stop the, the effects of the abuse as we get older. Yes, you know. that's, that, I feel like that comes down the road, that came down the road for me. For all of us. And that um, forgiveness is for ourselves. It's not to forgive, to forget. And compassion and understanding for that person's frailties, I don't think that that can happen too soon. That's just something that comes along the way. The more we're able to see it's about them, it's not about us, and to be able to observe and to distance ourselves and really understand that Yes, we're involved. We've been the victim, but it's it's not our it's not our story, or how so many people think it's their fault, or yeah, right. So, what would you say to somebody kind of summing this up? What would you say to somebody that is just starting this awakening, this journey that they something is just nagging inside of them that you know, they don't want to live the same. They want to rise above it. They want to do something knowing they need to start doing something, but not sure maybe quite what, what would you say to them? Well, again, to educate yourself about what is going on. I remember when I first was reading about what emotional, psychological abuse is, my eyes just went, this sounds very, very familiar. Wow, other people know about this. That was a long time ago. Then type for me personally, the types of mothers 
that you can really, because the mother-child relationship is such an intense one, or any primary caretaker, you would for sure say with the father too. Mm -hmm. And to speak up, that was part of how I feel like I stayed sane, was that I spoke up with my sister and my friends, and this helped me to see everything more objectively. And I didn't stay in, in a kind of secretive shame that is so damaging. We really need to speak up. Courage to speak up is so important. <clears throat> and to set boundaries, to make sure that we're safe, and to find ways to undo these negative internal message messages that we have believed about ourselves. They might be slightly different wording than what we originally heard, but so often we're, we continue the abuse of ourselves. And that, to me, is the insidiousness yeah. of psychological abuse. Our feelings of self-worth are so often... We don't realize our value. We don't realize so many things until we finally say, ah, I kind of really love myself. You have to love yourself. Yes. You know, and coming to yes. that. That's beautiful. Yes. I had one of the girls in, that um, had some sexual abuse happen to her. She's a chapter in a book. She's got a campaign called I'm a Statistic. And it's a huge, it's the hashtag I'm a Statistic. And the idea is, is that we we speak up and yes, I'm, I'm a statistic, but it's the awareness that's creating. So the Me Too, I'm a statistic. That was a hard word to say for me. <laughs> um, all of this is is the increasing the awareness and in the hopes that the parents of today will raise better children and won't won't fall into the same path or 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 just. Absolutely, you know, just waking up to what they're actually facing and what what's going on. Yeah, so well said. Examining our psychology so that we don't pass on the legacy. We That's have right. to stop this. We have too much ugliness in the world already. Yeah. So we can change, and unfortunately, we like to think that people that uh, learn from history, but we sure keep this world keeps repeating a lot of things in history and you know when you think about the wars and all the other things and you think oh, you know when will we learn you know and so but it comes down to the individual level what are we going to do yes. what are we going to do about it thank you so much for this awesome interview I appreciate their take coming all the way from <laughs> Germany <laughs> Just for this. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching this We Choose to Thrive interview. If you are currently in an abusive situation, please seek help immediately. Our purpose in creating this book and video series is to form a sisterhood of support. Know that abuse is abuse no matter what kind it is. The stories in this We Choose to Thrive series are as many and varied as the people in it. If this resonates with you, we welcome you and invite you to join us. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing this interview, please feel free to share.